Quit being so distracted about all the things that don't matter that much and put your focus on that which matters the most. Because just like Kobe, he did that and had that Mamba mentality for what purpose? Not just to look good on the court, but so that he might win. When it comes to the purpose that God has for you and me in our life, we wanna win. We don't want just to run. We don't want just to play. We wanna step in and fully accomplish that which God has created us for and taken hold of us for. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 98 of the Audacious Faith Podcast. How great it is to be back here with you sharing about some great things today. You might be noticing right away, you're saying, hey, what is he wearing? Now, if you're a Laker fan, you're going to pick this up right away. I, I've got the number eight right here. Okay, it's got legacy, and there's a number. I'm not going to stand up and model for you, but there's a big number 24 uh, on the back. And obviously, I'm, I'm wearing this for... Uh, kind of the remembrance of Kobe Bryant, who was one of my favorite players when he was a Laker for many years. He played for them for 20 years. He's a legend. He's probably one of the best NBA players to ever play the game. And whether you liked him or you didn't like him, let me just tell you, there were some qualities about him which carry on even today. And that was his extreme focused mentality. In fact, it's been named and nicknamed the Mamba mentality, and many players will even quote that today as they have some great games and really go after things, especially in crunch times of a game, which he was known for. There's a lot of people that they can play well, but when the pressure's really on, they fold. That wasn't true for Kobe. He was known for stepping it up when it was needed the most. So let me ask you, are you a person of focus. What is, what is the Mamba mentality? Really, it wasn't anything new. It was just an extreme focus, not marred by fear, not looking at things that would cause you to be distracted, but zeroing in on what it is that you're trying to do and having an intense work ethic and focus moving towards those things. And you know what? We need that today. In fact, just about an hour from now, I'm going to coach a game. I coach high school girls basketball, and it's a must win for us. By the time this airs, we'll already know what happened, and hopefully it went well, okay? And in order for my girls to win today, it's going to require extreme focus and not remembering what happened the first time when we played because we got smoked the first time we played this team this year. So we got to forget that which is in the past, and not relive that again, and focus on what's ahead, know what the goal is, and move towards that goal and execute it greatly. Now, same thing goes for you. Quite often in your life, whatever it is that you are facing, whatever it is you're dealing with right now, you may be looking at how you have failed in the past, how things have not gone right, how you've always been known for not coming through, how you've never been able to do it before. But you know what? You need to forget the past and look forward and press on to what God is telling you to do right now. I was just at a conference just this last weekend, and I heard something that I thought, wow, am I in a Tony Robbins seminar? Because I've gone to those as well. I love to go to a whole mix of things, biblical conferences, regular business conferences, I like to put it all together, filter it through the word, see what fits, see what doesn't fit. And here I am at this conference, and they're saying, hey, where your focus goes is where you're going to see results. They said this over and over again, several times, and I thought, am I at Tony Robbins seminar right now? Because when I went there, you know what he says? For those of you who have followed some of his teachings, where focus goes, energy flows, Right? That's how it is. And you know what? All of this, believe it or not, it's biblical. What it is that you're focusing on. In Philippians chapter 4, for instance, it tells us, don't be anxious for everything, but instead be praying, taking everything to God. And then it goes on to tell us how to not have our minds driving us crazy. Focus on that which is good and noble and pure and full of value. All of those things. It says, set your mind on those things. When you're setting your mind on those things, you don't have time to be worrying about everything else because you're going to place your energy 
wherever your focus is going. Now, I want to look at a little passage today that's in Philippians chapter 3, one of my favorite verses. And the Apostle Paul says, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Now, notice the process here. It says the first thing is forget the past. What you did before, how you failed, how you didn't come through, the mistakes you made, that's in the past. Learn from it, okay? We'll remember it only in a sense that that's what I did then, this is what I learned, and now this is what I'm going to do differently. But we don't focus on the past. So, for instance, we go into that game today, and if we're focusing on the fact that last time we couldn't get the ball down the court, last time we couldn't score, last time we couldn't stop them coming down the court, and if we say to ourselves that that reality from before is what's going to be today, the past will be repeated. And maybe you've seen that in your life over and over again, seemingly having the same issues, same failures, same shortcomings, the same story over and over again. He says, hey, don't be focusing on the past. The past is not today unless you choose it to be that. He says, instead, forget it. Look forward to what lies ahead. What is the task ahead? When Kobe was coming towards the end of the game, all he knew was that, hey, I got a score. I'm going to make this move. I'm going to score. I picture it. I know that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm going towards. That's where all my focus is. I'm not worried about the player that's defending me. I'm not worried about the fact that maybe one other time I didn't make this shot at the end of the game. No, that's all on the side. Living in the moment, that mentality of focus, right? So press on to reach the end and receive what? The heavenly prize. This is another thing that I learned over the weekend. And that is that they were saying that part of the focus of those who are believers, like hopefully you are, is that what did Jesus tell us? We have a great commission. We're supposed to be sharing the gospel, sharing it with people, teaching everything to people and what Jesus said, sharing his words, helping the people to be saved, to know him and to live for him and to spread that message throughout the world. That's where the focus is supposed to be. So what does the evil one do? The evil one comes into our Christian circles and starts changing our focus away from the Great Commission onto ourselves. How do I deal with my family issues? How do I deal with my financial issues? How do I deal with my anxious anxiety issues? How do I, you know, get better relationships? Uh, how do I, 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 everything about me, 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 and off of the focus, which is supposed to be the Great Commission, which is sharing that truth with everyone else. We don't have time for that. All our energy is going into trying to survive spiritually and emotionally ourselves, and the whole focus has gone there. Don't we see that this has been the tactic of the evil one to get us totally off track? You wanna find your real purpose in life, you wanna find real satisfaction, you wanna find real peace, then step into the moment, the moment of what God has created you for and why he put you on this earth, and start to fulfill and go after that prize before the time has come when our life is done. Recently, I had a birthday, 57 years of old. And you know what? I find that to be incredibly annoying. I really do. Because in my mind, I'm thinking I'm more focused than ever. There's so much I'm gonna do. There's so much that still needs to be done. I feel like I'm just getting started. And then I get this startling reality on the side that says, you're 57, you're getting old, man. You don't know how much time you have. But you know what? That's something I can't focus on that. I got to focus on pressing towards the goal. And now when time might be shorter, it's more important than ever. It's called supply and demand. Every moment, every time, every sermon, every podcast, every message, every conversation, I've got to be focusing on this one thing. And that is that upward call. And that is that prize of what God is calling me to. How about you? Quit being so distracted about all the things that don't really matter that much and put your focus on that which matters the most. And you know why? You know why? Because just like Kobe, 
he did that and had that Mamba mentality for what purpose? Not just to look good on the court, but so that he might win. That was all that mattered. Win. Okay? Same thing when it comes to the purpose that God has for you and me in our life. We want to win. We don't want just to run. We don't want just to play. We don't want just to be an also ran. We want to step in and fully accomplish that which God has created us for and taken hold of us for. Amen? I would like to help you with that. If you have some purpose that you're really praying about right now that's been heavy in your heart, I want to pray along with you. And we can do that by you making that known to me. You can contact me at jgothier, Senior. That's J-A-Y-G-A-U-T-H-I-E-R, sr at gmail.com or look up Jay Gothier Sr. on Instagram or on Facebook or you can look at us at the Audacious Faith Podcast on Instagram as well. And will you please share this with someone else who needs it and make sure you have subscribed to the podcast. It is always a pleasure. By the way, episode 100 is just around the corner. It's going to be a great one. This was episode 98. And I hope you've seen every single episode. If you have not, then go back and watch them on our channel. God bless you. And we look forward to sharing next time on the Audacious Faith Podcast. Take care.